Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys today as I reprise my role this week for week five of the Q&A of the new member orientation webinar that I give every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, enjoy. All right, guys, this is week five of the Q&A. Oh, my God, DMP, I literally just made a move, touched the red to green line, fantastic. Um, expected something like that. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do, guys. Let's open a, this up to a QA. and I'm going to show you some really cool information that me and Bauer were kind of spitballing last week on everything that it takes to be a new trader. So let me do that first, and then, and then we'll, where did I put that? Uh, did I even open it? Where the hell did I put that? Someone saw me. Oh, here we go. All right. Here's what we're going to do. So let me talk to the new traders really quick and tell you what Bao was talking about last week and why it was so key. So we talked a lot of stuff. Let me open this up. So guys, we were talking about process last week, right? Like process is one of the most important things you can do in trading. Uh, so let me give you Bao's process. Literally, he was posting everything last week from process down to sizing, down to everything. So let me read this out real quick because this is so key and it'll cover a lot of what I want to talk about today. So uh, Modern Rock, my alarm is set to 4.08 a.m. every morning. Then I check my scanners within the MIC chat room then look for locates. Brush teeth into my bowel, bowel, bowel movement thing. Uh, I'll be at my desk by 4.45 and go through low hangers and new places to see what I like to locate. Cobra has a lot of free locates, so call Cobra and open an account with them and tell them your MIC for the special discounts. This is very true. Uh, he was saying how he kind of screwed up a couple things yesterday. What he does is so up until the open, I am researching new plays and low hangers for lines. These are called areas of interest and to see the filings to see what edge he can find on these new plays. So Bao is literally nailing down three to four main plays. He even, he may be looking at 20, it doesn't matter. But you nail down your top three or four, you make a plan, you go to BAM SEC, you see what the filings look like, you see what the lines look like, and then you put your fantasy orders in. This is what we do every day. Then he narrows down the top three. Float is very important. Watch the Trading Fish videos. These questions are all in the videos. Because float, guys, float is very pertinent when it comes to range of a stock. So, like, you know, stocks go 30 cents can be a big move. And then sometimes a stock that goes $2 is a big move. You know what I mean? So it depends on the volatility, the range, and the float. And usually the float is a good indication of how volatile the stock can be. In fact, it's the best indication pretty much we have outside of, like, how good the catalyst is and the volume and past history. But you want to pay attention to the float. Uh, let's see. So he wakes up early to research these plays as well as locating hard to borrow stocks to short. He plans all his trades. My trades are planned before I click a button. This is key, guys, when it comes to trading. If you are winging it, you're dead. You need to plan and put these lines in place before you even place a trade. It's all in the lines. It's all in the price action. Anyone that tells you differently is probably just trying to think that they can holy grail and revolutionize themselves. If, the, if you're playing stocks with 1 million or 2 million volume plus enough volume to where it's conformed to the chart, it is in the lines, simply put. Um, so, you know, Bao knows all his areas of interest and has a plan on where to either add, where to enter, where to exit, where to take gains, and where to take losses. You want to focus on the one to three stocks. This is key. He places fantasy orders on all his plays that he likes, but he focuses again on the top three, and then he ranks them. So like, what's an A setup? What's a B setup? What's a C setup? Um, so he can size further into the best, and as Alex says, you know, forget or scalp the rest. Because when the stock gets there, you already know your plan. It's predetermined. You don't want to wing it, like I said. 
every time you try to nail moves, you'll screw all of them up. Um, nailing one play is better than screwing up five. I cannot talk about this more highly. I agree with this 100%. I would rather size into two plays a week, guys, at fantasy orders and make a ton of money in two plays versus try to make a little money on five plays and then wreck my mental capital on the process of doing so. Um, when starting out, paper trade, you know, learn the mechanics. Then after being comfy to go to real money, trading with tiny size is how you do it. You know, you paper trade for a month and then once you get consistent, once you get confident, then you know what you do? You, you throw a hundred shares in just to see what it's like to play with real money because the emotions are going to come. I don't care if you're playing with, playing with one share of real money. When real money is on the line, your reptilian brain that has not changed and since the caveman days goes into fight or flight and you will see if you're a total pussy or you're a total badass and you're going to now adjust based on the comfort level of how you understand how to handle adrenaline and how to handle putting your quote unquote life on the line because that's what your brain is telling you. And then once you get comfy, one share goes to 100 shares and 100 shares goes to 200 and 200 goes to five and five goes to, you know, you eventually get to where you want to go. I mean, there's a reason why it take, it took Alex six years to get to 100,000 shares short. Like there's a reason. It just takes time, man. It just takes time. Um, but you want to start out slow, which is the key here. Um, when you focus, when you find consistency, you can increase size, but don't want to size too early until you are consistent. Do your homework. It's basically classwork by watching our videos, watching our video library and observing. You don't want to start off gambling tomorrow. You know, a lawyer does not become a lawyer without going to law school, a doctor with medical school. They observe, they learn. Trading is no different. If you think trading is a lottery ticket, you're dead in the water. Um, trading is not a lottery ticket. You know what it is? In fact, it's not glamorous. It is a daily grind. It's like, you know what it is? You, you know what trading is like? I'll break it up for a second. So I live in Los Angeles, right? Um, uh, I've, I've been near the film industry my whole life. I've had a lot of family members in the film industry, actors, all that bullshit. Act, you know, actors, producers, directors. I've literally partied, chilled with everybody in Hollywood practically. And I got to tell you, all that polished bullshit where actors move from Missouri, Kentucky, and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to go to Hollywood. I'm going to be the next star. I'm going to make it. This is what new traders do coming into the market. They move to LA with the hundred dollars in their pocket and they think they're going to be co-starring with Brad Pitt tomorrow. Quote unquote, you think you're going to enter this trade and it's going to make you $4,000 in your first trade. And it's always going to be like that. No, that is wrong. You're going to get to LA and realize how expensive LA is and realize Robert Downey Jr. Doesn't just drive his Porsche around you all freaking day. And you're going to have to put in the work, put in the due diligence. And there's no difference with trading guys. It, it looks polished, but let me tell you, it's daily grind like anything else, just like a lawyer job is, just like real estate is. You've got to learn. You've got to work your way up. You've got to build the steps, build the platforms. And then maybe it gets polished later because momentum builds. And that's basically the strongest force in the universe is when you get some real shit going on you know, for yourself. You get some real knowledge. You get some money. Um, you get some skill sets. Then momentum kicks in and things take off. But you don't just start with momentum. you gotta, you got to build it up. Uh, so that's my rant there. Um, it is an iterative process, meaning back and forth to refine your process. Start with paper trading, find comfortability, and then go live trading. Like I said earlier, 100 shares to learn the mental and live trading aspects. If you find you're losing, you can go back to paper trading again. So it's iterative. Go back and forth process to find consistency while you're still learning the strategy. Just because you're paper trading doesn't mean you're not learning. You know what I mean? That's exactly what's happening. And just because you're not trading real money doesn't mean you shouldn't be in like MIC or anything and learning. That's the key. You should be paper trading in the beginning and watching our videos to build a foundation. And then eventually when you become self-sufficient, whether you want to still be in MIC or not, that's up to you. But you'll know what you're doing because we taught you how to be a self-sufficient trader. Um, but yeah, it's hard to, <laughs> whether you make $4,000 a day, it's hard to leave MIC because the community, I mean, you don't want to trade alone. It's fun. Like, dude, I would never leave MIC if I wasn't, you know, a part of the running of MIC and creation of MIC. If I was just a member, I'd never leave it, man. It's fun as hell. You have a networking, 
you, you have a community, you have a family to back you up and be supportive and be positive, man. It doesn't matter if you need other traders or not. It's great to be a part of a community and they hold you accountable indirectly and directly. Um, ah, yes. Olek, what's up, buddy? A1 steak sauce, baby. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, so when starting out, guys, just observe and watch. See what others are doing and find a tab partner. Uh, oh, here's, here's some good information. DOS has a free paper trading account, guys. You can go to DOSTrader.com or whatever it is. Um, pay $100 a month, $150, whatever it is. I can't remember. Um, I haven't used it in like four years or whatever. Uh, but you can um, download these and then paper trade with a professional platform. So like when you see the charts and recaps and fills, guys, this is a DOS chart. You can, you can, do a, you can practice on a paper account that looks exactly like this with your arrows and entries um, to see if you're lining up with BAO or if it's, or if it's looking like it's working. Um, yes, 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 yes. And then you can go live you know, after, after 30 days with 100 shares to learn. Uh, paper trading is like practicing before you go to the NFL Sunday. Even NFL guys practice all week before the big real game. Uh, when you're not trading well, bench yourself and go back to the practice field, just like pro sports athletes. Remember, in the beginning, it's not about making money. Like I said, guys, it's about foundation. It's about process and strategies. Your 100 shares may just pay your commission, your commissions and you break even, but you'll see if you're nailing entries and you're nailing exits. Um, better to pay $1 for that trade than to lose $100 each time because you didn't backtest. And then get a broker with a per share commission structure. So don't use Ameritrade or E-Trade. I mean, you guys can, but you're going to pay like nine bucks a trade, eight bucks a trade, and then they're going to charge you um, other fees. Dude, at Cobra, it's like a dollar per trade if you're under a thousand shares because it's per share. They tailor to the professional day trader. Uh, a hundred shares, literally a thousand shares costs like one buck versus like eight dollars for, and then 16 for a round trip. So two versus 16 or whatever it is. Um, don't worry, guys, uh, too much about PDT, too, when you're starting out because you want to enter only on the high probability setups. But like Bao said, it's better to make two trades for $100 than 10 trades for $20 each and you risk your mental capital. Problem is, is when you make nine wins for $20 each, the one red loss day is going to wipe you out for 200 I struggled with this for probably the first three years of my career is, you know, I'd be green for 20 days in a row and then the 21st day or the 31st day would wipe out the whole month because I was stubborn, I didn't use hard stops, things like that. Um, your losses need to be much smaller than your wins. It's okay to lose three times $20 and then make one, make one win for 100 and you're still up. That's the key. This is why they say size the best and forget the rest. Um, hardest skills to develop, but essential if you want to stay in the game, you must be okay with being able to miss a trade. This is called avoiding FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, you must be okay with taking small losses before they turn into big losses, hard stops, and cut your losing position. If you're not using a hard stop, you are dooming yourself, I promise you. Um, you must be robotic and systematic and follow your process and plan. Stay humble or else the market humbles you. The best comes with experience. You will understand over this, over this game that over the years, you will just start to see little subtleties that are nuances that you never caught before. And it just comes in time when people are like, how do I learn this tomorrow and stuff? I'm like, dude, that took me three years to learn every single day. Just showing up in screen time, man. I promise you, it takes time. Um, you will learn to trade and then go back to your trades and see what works and what doesn't. You know, you will just become self-sufficient. In the beginning, you do not need to know. Oh, you. Uh, in the beginning, you do not know what works for you. You have to do it. Uh, do not be afraid to lose because the process has risk management, which has stops in place. So if you're protecting yourself, you're good on all counts. So before you enter any trade, you need to analyze your risk, meaning you know where you will take the loss so that you know what to expect already. If you cannot handle the loss, it means you're trading too large. So size down and give yourself a wider range. Um, I can help you on this on daily calls. Myself and the moderators do daily calls in MIC, you know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is, whatever you need. Um, sometimes five minutes, we get to the point really quick and we can show you just how to do these simple things that may tweak your whole game and make it better. Um, but use stops is vital in which um, I reiterate daily, literally. Um, this is why you use 100 shares, for example, so you can learn all this and make those mistakes first. Um, instead of, you know, going 20,000 shares, you make one little hiccup and then you're dead. 
uh, without losing your mind in your account. Get a tab, learn together, and it will help your learning curve. Um, always use market stops because you want to get out. It's a guaranteed out, but you may, may deal with slippage. Limit stops, they will get you, they, they will get you out sometimes. They don't always fill. So if the stock, you know, teleport candles through a limit stop and uh, doesn't come back down and while you're short and it's trouble, man, it's trouble. Like the li like, look at Tesla right now. See this big decline? It literally just dropped $3 in like two camels. This is insane. I called that short live. I was like, Val, are you shorting this? I was like, don't do it, dude. Just go enjoy your day because he'd be glued to computers the rest of the day. <laughs> oh my God, Tesla's about to go red nasty. But the key is, is um, this was such a big candle that that limit stop, if you had a limit stop on Tesla on the long side, may not have gotten triggered. So that's a great example if you can simultaneously pull the Tesla chart right now. Um, uh, you do not want to stop out where the herd is. You want to keep your stops where the where where the chart is telling you to get out, not your PL or the sheet. If you are shaken out by 10 cent moves, you are sized in too large. And it's very hard to have a trading career risking five and ten cents. You need to size appropriately and scale the trade. Here's the advice I gave a um, a member well, Bao did, um, in which he thinks can help everyone. I suggest you lower your size um, and let the stock work longer. So if you're shaking out by 10 cents, you can reduce your size so that 10 cents won't hurt you. I think you size too large. You need to be able to take, you need to be able to be down 20 cents and be okay. Remember range. These stocks have range. You need to size appropriately to handle this range. Um, don't be the idiot who's, you know, um, Oh, no, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. <laughs> Don't be the idiot. Um, be it whether it's 20 or 30 cents, line to line, like we talked about earlier. You need to be able to handle line to line in terms of the range and float. So I think you're sizing too large. Some stocks range are more than others is the point. Someone asked me, I always stop out at the top. So this was my advice. Read the screenshot in proper sizing. So let me find a better one. Um, here's another example, guys. Let me read this to you. Um, actually, let's make this even bigger. This is great information, right? I'm telling you, man, this is the shit. Thou knows his stuff, guys. Thou knows his stuff. Uh, trading is mostly mental discipline. Be patient. Let the trade setup come to you, and don't keep adding to losers. Remember, you only need a few good trades a day to make your daily pay. So be patient. So try it tomorrow. Be super patient and stock that perfect setup for that trade. Concentrate on the entry, which is everything, and everything will be much easier. M Rock rules. Modern Rock. Uh, that's his, that was his old account. Um, so here's the screenshot, guys, of the other one. Um, this was another conversation Val had with somebody. So check this. Um, Henry, uh, hey, Modern Rock, I've been following you on Twitter, uh, on your Twitter account for probably almost two, two years now. And, and just wanted to say, you know, you're a big, huge inspiration to me. I'm still struggling to become profitable. I think the biggest factor is that I don't know exactly what to look for when forming a bias on a stock. That's why I wanted to reach out to you and see if any advice you could point to me. And these were all of Modern Rock's um, replies. Go back and analyze your trades. See what trades you were more consistently profitable with. Eliminate anything that you were losing on consistently. Eliminate 50% 50, 50 of your trades. Start with smaller size. You will experience that with smaller size, you can hold longer and let your game plan play out and not get shaken out with the slightest movements. If you are constantly too nervous, may mean your trade size is too large. If you are constantly stopping out at the top or bottom, means that you are a part of the herd. What you're doing, the herd is doing. So think what you can do. Start slower, smaller size. Start later, more patience to wait longer. Uh, consistency is the ultimate name of the game for a successful day trading career. Consistency starts with one day. Aim for one green day at a time and then two green days, then three, four, etc. Confidence will build, your trading will build, and good habits will form. Uh, as consistent as you may think you are, do not let one trade wipe out 10, 20, 356 days of gains. Percentage of wins is meaningless if that 1% loss wipes out 90% of your gains. Um, just a side note, that was my biggest kryptonite for three years, guys, is in my trading career, you know, you get, oh, Tesla's red. Yep. Oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to chase. <laughs> oh, the FOMO, baby. See, you caught, a, you, you caught me in my phone. Dude, that's real-time FOMO, man. I'm telling you. Oh, boy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill. 
Um, so trading is about pattern recognition, guys. So study the commonalities, charts, industries, types of news, filings, etc. Not just the price and not just the chart. It's cumulative analysis of many factors. And lastly, it's all experience. Keep working hard, wake up earlier, and stay up later than everyone else. Good luck. Sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go. Use a hard stop. So that's it, guys. That's basically all the stuff that I wanted to basically reiterate that me and Bao talked about last week because that's, that's trading. It doesn't get more real than that. That is what trading, that's trading in a nutshell. That is what trading is. So, you know, this would be a great um, video to maybe play in the car and traffic over and over again, guys. Like just all that Bao advice that I just said. So, you know, we're, we'll post this video on YouTube here probably in the next couple of days. There goes Tesla. Oh my God, 240 now. Um, we'll post this in the next couple days and guys literally like listen to this video a couple times. These are absolute golden knowledge, golden words, golden lingo, golden terms, golden advice from Bao who's been doing this for 16 plus years and who's had a very stellar career in this industry, which is not easy. You know, trading is very simple, but it's not easy. Uh, let me, let me kick through some of these questions. I think you guys, I, I, I may have skipped over a couple of these. So uh, lots of scanners five years ago from selling bad service. Do, 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 doing my first trick order. You speak nice, Woody. Uh, Tom, if anybody wants to know how to grow a small account, hit me up. I'll try my best. Yeah, guys, Tom Diesel has done a fantastic job. Hit him up, man. Seriously. So, should one start from watching the videos, or is it in order to them? So you can mimic one trade and on demand help the learning curve. Yeah. So, MIC student. Um, the way to go about it, buddy, is to watch the Joe Kelly video series, watch the Matt Chicago series, watch the Bow Daily recaps. Oh my God, Tesla, 239 free fall. You see why I wanted to chase? <laughs> you kind of real time, just like, it, oh man, I should have done it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm focused here, I'm focused here. Um, let's see. <laughs> what do you, preach trading better than that? My, my brother. Uh, MIC student, oh my gosh, I should have done this orientation when I first started. Lots of options here. Um, most chats just offer a DVD in a chat room. Yeah, guys, who literally like walks you through weekly on exactly what to do, exact curriculum, who to talk to, who can help you. This is why MIC, man, we're hands on. We're hands on. We want to make sure you guys know you're, you're taken care of. Um, if you can answer faster than talks in the weekend mentoring, I'll buy you a chicken dinner. <laughs> Two point, beyond, beyond chicken. There you go, beyond meat. Uh, trading ended up like being school to be an engineer. It looks like exactly MIC of day one. Wow, never knew that about limit stops. Yes, yeah, yeah, dude, so that's key. You know, you come in here weekly, you learn one thing that can save you a ton of money, it's worth it, it's worth it. Mark, what's up, buddy? No problem, man. If anything, it was most Bow's advice today. <laughs> You guys have any questions, man? I, uh, I mean, I pretty much said about everything you can, and I showed you guys the whole basically template of how to do this. But if you guys have any last minute questions, we can get these in real quick before I pass the hell out because I got such a migraine. Oh my god! I don't know what it, I don't know what, dude. Someone hit me in the freaking head, man. Maybe one of my side chicks came in and like caught me on the head when I didn't know. She was pissed. She saw my phone. <laughs> is there a theoretical limit to how many people can short locate limit um oh like if i understand your question correct yes this is why yes there is an absolute limit this is why hard to borrow fees brother and and there's only a certain amount of shares so you know if cobra is saying hey you know we have thirty thousand shares once those thirty thousand shares of whatever it is, I don't know. I mean, I'll just use the MPI for example, which they, you know, nobody had shares of this today, literally only one brokerage that I don't even know of. Um, you know, if they only have 30,000 and Alex comes in and takes 10 and I take seven and Bao takes 13 and, you know, another guy takes a couple, like they're gone, you know, like nobody can, nobody can, you know what I mean? Like if there's 30,000, 40,000, 50, once they get used up man, they're used up, there is a limit. Uh, although people do make it shorting, which I, I think is, you know, pretty much damn near illegal and they pretend they have shares, but they don't have shares. And it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I just, uh, I try to go with the brokers that are doing, doing it legit and, and, uh, yeah, I want to make sure the broker actually has the shares, man. That's key. Damn. Tesla 238. Oh my God. 
I wanted to chase that at 241 real quick for a quick scalp. Could have gotten two dollar. Two dollar make your mama holla. Uh, wouldn't the edge disappear eventually? Honestly, bro, I don't think so. I mean, this is this is a whole discussion up for debate and topics, but Here's the thing. Nobody shorted like seven years ago, right? Now everybody and their mother shorts. But guess what? If you wake up early enough and you get the, lo the locates, the patterns are still there, man. Anybody who says the patterns aren't here anymore is bullshit. The patterns are completely here. We make money every day shorting, longing, first bounce works, the death line works. Dude, these, these strategies work, bro. I, I don't think the edge will ever disappear because we're playing retail panic. Uh when you wait for confirmation versus anticipation. Confirmation, man, you're playing panic all day. If you play the right edge, you're playing panic and panic is identifiable and the patterns are still there. So uh, do I think it'll eventually disappear? I really don't, I really don't. I used to be scared about these things disappearing. Now I don't. Not at all. Not at all, partner. Not at all. All right, guys. Last chance for a couple last-minute questions. If not, I'm going to kick out of here. But uh, let me know if anybody uh, has any last-minute questions or something you want me to talk about um, and or my PMs are always open. So um, you can always DM me, guys, or any of our moderators. Uh, like I said, I'll just post a one. Actually, it's right here. Um, TashaMyInvestingClub.com for anything if you need upgrades, um, whatever it is, guys, whatever it is. Oh my God, Tess, I can't watch this. Dude, I can't watch this. Jesus. I wanted this. Oh God. I can't watch. Oh, WKHS, nice candle there. All right, guys, if that's the end of the questions, I'm going to kick out of here. I'm going to keep this short and sweet today. You guys have been amazing. Uh, I love doing these weekly. I got a lot of people in here, you know, show up next week guys and, and we'll do it again and we'll talk about some cool stuff and, uh, you know, bring, bring questions, you know, come prepared and I'll try to answer the best I can <laughs> as always. <laughs> Thanks buddy. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.